Hey YouTubers, this is Chelsea Malfoy and today I'm going to show you how I make resin. I do it a little bit different than um, some people, so stay tuned and keep watching. So to make resin, you will need resin itself. I use EasyCast and it comes in two bottles, the hardener and the resin. And then you will need a mold. I have these two plastic molds meant for resin and you can also use a silicone mold but if you're a beginner I suggest you use one of these because it you can actually see what you're making in the back and you will also need a cup to stir the resin in and I use a straw to stir the resin and I will tell you more about that later and I also use a little scrap piece of paper, but I use sticky notes, and a toothpick. Then, you will need whatever stickers you want to use, and whatever glitter or anything, whatever else you want to use. And for some stickers, you will need Mod, Mod Podge and a paintbrush. So, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is pick out what sticker you want to use. And I'm going to use this Choco Cat and this Rilakkuma, French theme Rilakkuma, for this. Um, the Rilakkuma is actually a sticker, and the Choco Cat is a little cut out of a piece of paper. So, you first thing you want to do is make a plan. You pick out your sticker, and then you pick out what glitter you want to go with it, and then you pick out which mold you want to use. So, I think for this Rilakkuma, I'm actually going to use this light blue. And for this Choco Cat, I'm going to use this holographic, like, purpley pink. And another way of um, that I have learned in helping to help pick me out is um, I cut up a little piece of plastic from a sticker sheet that actually matches the shape of my mold. So to help me plan out, like if I want multiple stickers, I just stick it on there and place it in the mold. Or also since I already have it planned out and it's clear, I can set it on top of glitter to figure out which color I like best. Which is very helpful. And um for today's tutorial, I'm just going to do a plain glitter background, but you can also, like, go crazy and do multiple layers. Like, this one's going to have micro marbles and another background. And these ones, this is painted and it's got glitter. And this has got some cellophane, and I'm going to put another color behind it. And this one has two different types of stickers and some glitter and I'm gonna put some more in the background so you can go totally crazy with the layers if you want but um, today I'm just gonna show you a simple how to just do glitter in the background so. once you've gotten that all picked out you wanna pick out what mold you wanna go into so me I just like to place the sticker in each mold and see which one it fits into because Oopsie, if it's perfectly in that one. So I'm going to use that one for the Choco Cat. And for the Rilakkuma, I think I'm going to do this heart. See? And that's also why these come in handy. Because I like using this square one a lot because it's big. And not a lot of stickers are tiny. So these are the two molds I'm going to use today. Alright, so now I'm going to just rip these off. And just to make sure I don't forget, I have to clear off the rest of my workspace. And because sometimes you might, if you're in a rush or you're doing multiples at a time, you might forget what sticker is in there and or what type of glitter you wanted to use. So I usually set them out where I want them. And sometimes I'll even put a little marker of which mold I'm using just so I can remember. So now I got these taken out, and these stickers are actually, this Choco Cat might be okay because it's got a plastic background, but 
this uh, Rilakkuma sticker is actually a seal sticker. It's not a sticker flake, so it will definitely need some Mod Podge. Um, I'll show you in a second of the same stickers I used and the difference without Mod Podge and with Mod Podge. So, um, Mod Podge is pretty easy to use. Um, it's kind of like a glue kind of uh, consistency. And all you want to do is dip your brush in just a little and then paint it on. And it looks white like Elmer's glue, but it'll dry clear. So um, I'm going to Mod Podge these each one layer. And make sure you stick them on some, uh, stick your stickers on something that the stickers can peel off of. This is actually the paper the Rilakkuma stickers were on. And I can actually use my work mat if I want to, because I can easily peel them off. But do not stick your stickers to Mod Podge on anything you can't peel it off of, because then you'll have to cut it out or throw it away or restart all over again. So, um, I'm going to Mod Podge these real quick and be right back. So I'm done painting these, and this is only the first layer, and I'll probably do two or three more layers for the Rilakkuma and just one more for the Choco Cat. But um, you pretty much just want to paint it on, not too thick, not too thin, and try to make even strokes. And they dry within a couple minutes, so it doesn't take too long. Um, the whole resin process takes a pretty long time. Um, and then here's an example. This bottom one, I didn't use Mod Podge. This top one, I did. So you can see, especially on Curatory, that the resin kind of bled through the sticker because it was a paper sticker and it wasn't thick enough. And when you put the Mod Podge on it, it makes a coating around the sticker. And, um... It didn't bleed through. And you can tell on Kralakuma's face, too. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to wait for these to dry. And then paint a few more layers. And then we'll go on to uh, mixing the resin. Alright, so now it's time to peel them off. And when you do, you might get a little... No, it's hard to see. A little extra and that stuff you have to trim off because it will um, stay in the resin like it'll be mucky in the resin so you just take a little pair of scissors and trim that excess see it's like a fuzzy excess just trim it off real quick time to mix the resin so make sure your cup has nothing nasty in it like this one does there so I use the cat method to measure. You need to make sure that when you measure these, you measure them equally. If you don't, you will have pieces that will be too goopy and you have to hold, throw the whole thing out. Or they'll be too bendable or it just won't work if you don't measure them equally. Here's um, a link to my video where it showed that they got really goopy and bad. So you want to prevent that. So. You can use measuring cups or whatever, but I like to use the caps because it's easiest that way. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm just going to start with the resin. And <clears throat> you have to be very careful because it's very sticky. So I'm just going to pour it in until it reaches the top of the cap and then pour it into the cup. Then, I take my straw and make sure I scoop out every little tiny bit of resin that I can get out of it. So once I'm done with that, then I just screw the cap back on and do the same for this one. Just pour it in until it's filled to the top and scrape out all of the excess. 
All right, screw the cap back on this one. And from time to time, you might want to, when you leave, when you use the cap, it leaves a little bit of resin because it's so gooey in the cap, and sometimes it pools and squishes out. From time to time, you want to clean your botter, bottles so they aren't sticky, and I just use Clorox wipes. Or you can use rubbing alcohol or whatever. So, um, now it's time to mix it. Oh, it's hard to see on camera, but in person you can see the resin, the difference between the resin and the hardener, because one's a little more yellower than the other, so when you stir them, you can see the stripes of the different colors, and then you just um, mix it, slowly mix it for about four minutes. So one of the main reasons I use a straw to stir my resin with is because while I'm stirring, I can actually use it to blow out some of the bubbles that the stirring creates. And then even after I pour the resin, I can use the straw to blow out bubbles that were created. So I went ahead and used the rest of the resin to cover the back of this one and I mixed the last bit of it with some blue food coloring and poured it in this one. And uh, these are the two molds we're working with for this tutorial. And um, I just want to do a sticky test real quick. It's been like a half an hour since I poured it. so. And as you can tell it's a little bit harder than it was when we first poured it but it's not the consistency we need yet so I'm gonna wait another half an hour and try another sticky test. So uh, time kind of flew by and it's been an hour um, since I did the last check so I'm gonna check it one more time and I think it's at the perfect consistency to put in the stickers so um, we're gonna do that now so I'm going to grab my Choco Cat one and pick it up and stick it in. I'm going to lightly push it in from the center and push it in to the bottom if you want it to be more closer to the front. And you don't have to push it in all the way if you want to um, make it look more three-dimensional. And let's see, I'm going to move it a little, and then at this point you want to check if there's bubbles and pop them. And I'm going to get my Rilakkuma, and pick him up, and stick him in. And then put this on the paper so it doesn't get all over. And um, then, see there's bubbles forming already. And then you can pick it up and look at it from behind to check to see if there's any bubbles. And it doesn't look like there's too many and they're mostly on the side. 
but then you pretty much can just move the sticker and pop the bubbles and then move it back into place. And this right here, the ones around the corners are actually little nubbins on the mold that help keep them flat and level so that they don't um, tilt so the resin um, dries flat. So um, I'm going to poke the bubbles and let them sit for a little bit before I add the glitter. So I'll be back to show you guys that. Alright, so it's been a little time since um, I pushed these down and poked the holes. And more holes remain. So um, you can try and poke them again. Or what I like to do is take my straw from before and try and blow the bubbles out. And see, it popped them. And the main reason why we wait for it to, to get sticky to put the stickers in is because the stickers will float and even waiting this sticker floated so I need to push it back down And then we're going to wait a little bit longer to add the glitter because I want to make sure all the bubbles are gone and it's not going to move anymore until I put the last bit of glitter over it. So, see you in a couple minutes. Alright, so I think they are sticky enough and there's no more bubbles that we could um, add in the glitter. So, um... These are the little glitter glitters I have and, um... You pretty much just want to make all the glitter go away from one corner. So that way when you cut it, it doesn't go everywhere. Gently sprinkle in the glitter. And make sure you don't get it in the other one like I just did. Uh, That's okay, because I'm just going to take my finger and move this over. And if you get any in your other mold, which I did a little bit, you just take your toothpick and scrape it out. There. I think I got most of it out. And then I'm going to lightly tap it and tilt it and wiggle it and even lightly stick my finger and push the glitter around the edges. That way I get a light layer. So I can save as much glitter as I can. You can actually fill the whole thing because I pour a layer of um, resin on top to keep the glitter sealed in. Um, some people just like to pour the glitter on and then shake off the excess and then put a glaze on the back so it doesn't fall off. But I like doing an extra layer of resin just to make sure the glitter stays secure. There. Only a little bit on my finger. That's okay. Just wipe it on my pants. No big deal. Alright, and then we'll do this one. So, I actually found some star glitter that I have that kind of matches this color. So, I'm going to use a little bit of this before I use this. So, I had a problem with this glitter. It kind of got everywhere. So, I had to take out a bunch of it and lean it across the side. This happens occasionally um, when you're working with... Um, pieces next to each other 
the glitter will get into the other ones. All I did was take my toothpick and pick a little piece of glitter out and scrape it off on the side. Um, when this hardens, I can just sand it off or scrape it off and throw it out. It's no big deal. Um, it just takes extra time and patience to try and get it right. So um, I just dropped in some of the uh, star glitter. And um, the cool thing about these bigger, chunkier glitters is if you don't like where it's put, you can pretty much just replace it, like reposition it where you want to. So like this one that's in the corner, like I'm going to try and lay it flat or push it down a little. And there's too many on this side, so I'm going to move some over here. And at this point, you could also like push some down to give it more 3D layers if you would like, which I think I might actually do. Push a few of them down. But you have to be careful when you're at this point, when you're pushing more things down, because you could create more bubbles. Move some over. I try not to put anywhere the sticker is. So yeah, after I'm done fussing with this, I'm going to add the um, blue glitter on like I did with this one. You just pretty much dump it on. Um, nothing really too special to show about it. So I'm going to keep poking at these and then I will show you what they look like after. So this is what they look like, and this is what they actually look will look like when they're fully done and popped out. And um, like I mentioned before, I like putting a thin layer of resin on the top to seal them. So I'm probably going to mix some more resin soon and show you that. So this is what it looks like when the resin gets hard and this is the only mess I need to clean up besides the glitter. Um, I didn't get any resin on my table at all so yeah easy cleanup. If you get any resin on your hands I highly suggest using Clorox wipes. Um, they get the sticky gone and I'm pretty sure baby wipes work just as well. So um, I just waited till it got harder pop these out so I could use these when I filled the top of those because usually when I do resin pieces I do a couple and then when I go to fill in the back of these I'll start making new ones so I've always got resin pieces going so um, I've mixed a whole new batch of resin and um, I'm now just gonna finish these guys off by pouring a little on the top of each So you just want a little just to seal in the the glitter. You don't want to fill it in too much. And I left some space and it'll eventually like slowly start to fill in the rest and even if I wanted to I can take the straw and move it around. But yeah, so that's pretty much it and um it takes about like I said, I think it it's all depends on the area you live in and um, how high from the um, the ocean line or the water line or how high you live. Um, but mine takes about I'm gonna say five hours, maybe more, for it to fully harden, for it to be able to pop out, and um, so yeah, I will show you guys at that point, and then I'll show you what the finished product looks like. I forgot to mention at this point where you fill in the top layer of resin, it doesn't really matter if it has bubbles or not. If you're going to do a piece that's kind of see-through, like this one is going to be, then um, bubbles do matter. But if there's just glitter in the background, no one's going to see the back anyways. So, you can pop them if you want. I usually like to pop them, but it's not that big of a deal. So, it's actually been eight hours that um, this resin has been sitting, 
and um, it's sticky still. You can hear that sticky noise. And you can actually pop them out at this point, but it's harder to pop them out. Um, you could do it, but you might risk bending it. So um, I'm probably just going to let it sit for maybe two or three more hours. And um, at that point, or even at this point, you can try putting it in the freezer to pop them out. But um, it'd be safer if you waited till they were um, like harder. So it's been three more hours, and they are hard as hard can be. So no more fingerprints nothing so it's time to pop them out and um, <clears throat> you if you're having struggles trying to pop them out you can put them in the freezer and it helps release it and but I think I'm gonna try and see if I can do it um, it might be harder one-handed but let's see There we go. There. So there's the real Akuma one, and as you can tell, there's ick all around the sides of it. And we can fix that. That's one of the next steps. There. And here is the Choco Cat one. So, um, now that these are popped out, I'm going to show you the next step in finishing these. So, here they are. And this little tag piece, you can either sand it off, but as you can tell, it's pretty malleable. So, I'm just going to take a pair of junky scissors and just cut it off. It's that easy. Just trim off the little nasty edge pieces. And I think this one came out pretty darn cute. But as you can see, there's a few more pieces that need to be cut off. I just cut off the little bits. And um, this one doesn't have any junky pieces. But what I like to use to make the edges um, good, like not as scratchy, so that they're wearable is I use a nail file just one of these you can buy a pack of like four of them at your local dollar store um, and I pretty much just sand the edges there it's that easy you can use sandpaper if you like but I feel like this is more um, easier and manageable and you control where you're sanding because with sandpaper you could accidentally sand while you're sanding this side, you could accidentally sand this part, which you don't want to do. But, um, yeah, I really like the way these turned out. They're really cute. And, um, <clears throat> I think it's good enough that it doesn't need a coat of glaze. But if you put them in the freezer, they might get foggy. And if they stay foggy then a coat of glaze will clear the fog right up. So, um, I'm just going to finish sanding these, and then they'll be done and cute. So, they're all sanded and ready to go. This is what the finished product looks like. At this point, there's many options you can do with them. You can glue an earring back to them, and turn them into cute earrings. These are a little too big for that, unless you like big earrings. Or you can get some glue-on bales and glue them on the back and turn them into pendants for necklaces. Or you can <clears throat> glue an eye pin on the back and turn it into a pendant that way. Or you can use a dermal and drill a hole and glue it inside the hole. Or you could even glue it onto a hair clip and turn it into a cute little hair clip. Or if you have any ring bases, they would be adorable rings. Let's see if I can. Mm -hmm. 
Etsy. Be really cute rings. Um, <clears throat> or you can um, just leave them like this and use them as cabochons or just decorate your room with them. They're really cute and really fun to make. So I hope you guys like my tutorial and have a great day. Bye!